Attention, please. Flight 631 for Salt Lake City, Denver, and New York is now boarding at gate number 7. Board flight 631, please. Attention, please. Flight 549 from Miami and Intermediate Cities. Now Down to Boston, over to El Paso, into Chicago, out to Portland, Oregon. Nine and one half hours from coast to coast. Four and one half hours from Jackson, Mississippi to Detroit, Michigan. North, south, east, west. There are 27 scheduled airlines. There are almost 600 airline stops. Every major city, every state in the 48, touched on by the unseen high roads of the sky. The easiest method of travel yet devised by man. America travels the air about its business, casual and matter of fact. Businessmen in particular travel the airlines, buying, selling, developing and organizing. The man with the briefcase, weaving the pattern of American business, carrying contracts and plans and specifications, breaking bottlenecks, meeting deadlines. The American businessman, transferring from airliner to air taxi, from one airplane to another, flying on to smaller towns to plants and mines and mills using the air taxi as the quickest and most efficient means of reaching his destination. Air taxis are convenient. Privately owned and operated, they are comfortable airplanes piloted by experienced and able men. There are more than 1,500 such operators licensed to carry people and property. Air transportation is their business. Ground transportation is also being provided for by many airport operators. Transportation after arrival has been a major problem. No one has realized this more clearly than the men who manage the airports. They're finding ways to meet the problem. One answer is the airport courtesy car. These cars are owned and maintained by the airport. They are furnished at a low charge and as a customer service to out-of-town people. Business flying is on the increase. So, too, are the airports providing this courteous service. To the flying businessman, the airport courtesy car is important. It is the last link in his transportation investment. American business firms have more airplanes and do more flying than any other group in the world. Both civil type and military type airplanes have been converted into flying offices. These offices move over the country at speeds of from 150 to 300 miles an hour. More territory covered, far less travel time involved, and work goes on during the flight. They go when they wish and where they wish. They do business as usual in the comfort and privacy of the company-owned airplane. There are aircraft companies that specialize in designing executive airplanes. They are planned with an eye to comfort as well as efficiency, as carefully planned for privacy and livability as any home. They are designed to fit the needs of the owner, often with a living room area, built-in television, planters. Large picture windows are popular. Cabins and vestibules are soundproofed with sound-absorbing material. Tables and furnishings are specially designed. There is often an air-to-ground telephone. This company vice president flies at 12,000 feet elevation in a corporation-owned Martin B-26 conversion. He travels at 300 miles per hour in a soundproof, pressurized cabin capable of accommodating 16 people. Since many business flights are made at night, these airplanes are equipped for relaxation as well as work. Countless businessmen fly their own airplanes. The majority of airplane owners are over 40 years of age. Banker, salesman engineer, auto dealer, executive secretary, district distributor, sheep rancher, roller rink operator, machine builder, brace maker, broker, 
construction engineer, electrical contractor, plumber, doctor, combustion engineer, cattle buyer, retailer, builder, veterinary, salesman, repairman, lawyer, insurance agent. And then there are businessmen every day turning their thoughts to the airplane and learning to fly. This man is a qualified flight instructor. His business is teaching people to fly. He is understanding and courteous. He has a sound knowledge of airplanes and what they can do. It costs less than $100 to learn to fly, less than $500 to become a qualified licensed pilot. There's no age limit on learning to fly. First, the student pilot becomes acquainted with the functional parts of the airplane. He learns to check the airplane and to recognize for himself if it is ready to fly. This simple procedure is line checking. A pilot line checks his aircraft every time he flies. The modern airplane is well designed. Structurally, it is light and flexible, and very strong. All aircraft wings are fundamentally the same shape. This shape is the basic airfoil. The tail assembly is checked. Once the student is acquainted with the outside of the airplane, instruction inside begins. He sits in the pilot seat, the instructor on his right. His instructor shows him that the wheel works smoothly and accurately. When he knows how to use the brakes and start the airplane, he is taught to taxi the airplane on the ground. He is taught ground courtesies and how to watch for other aircraft. Taxiing develops control which is later used on takeoff and landing. The same day, they fly. They stop at the end of the runway, brakes are set, gas is checked. The throttle is opened, the engine power is checked on each ignition system individually. The carburetor heat is checked by turning it on and off. The throttle is closed to the idling position. This is the engine check. Now the student sees if the airplane's controls move freely and easily. First, the aileron action. Then the wheel forward and back for the elevator. Rudder pedals in and out for the rudder fin. Line check, engine check, and control check are performed before every flight. The instructor releases the brakes, opens the throttle, and as the airplane takes off, dual instruction begins. With the rudder, the airplane is kept from turning. After it has gained speed, the elevator is brought up and the airplane takes off. The airplane is equipped with dual controls and the student can easily follow the movements of the He is shown one simple maneuver at a time and then is allowed to practice it. By this method, he learns to fly the airplane exactly where he wants it to go. With less than five hours of dual instruction, the average person will handle the airplane in a confident manner. Before a student is allowed to solo, he must be proficient at takeoff and landing. He is taught air courtesy and to fly a good pattern around the airport. He practices many spot landings. By the time he has had 10 hours of dual instruction, he can land and take off with confidence, without help or advice from his instructor. Before a student solos, he must know the basic civil air regulations governing air traffic. When the instructor is satisfied that his student knows the simple regulations and that he is capable of flying the airplane alone, he asks him to make three takeoffs and three landings. On his first solo flight, the student is required to put into use all that he has learned. He has been taught to watch for other aircraft, 
He has been taught to make a proper final approach. He knows how to keep the proper airspeed, control wheel forward for more airspeed and wheel back for less. As he approaches the runway, he slows down. And as the airplane touches the ground, the control wheel is all the way back. After 40 hours of mixed dual and solo flying, he passes the regulation flight check. He takes a written examination which assures that he understands the basic principles of map reading, weather, and flight. His instructor checks him out in other airplanes. Now, a qualified licensed pilot, the businessman is interested in finding the specific airplane that will meet his needs. His hours in the air while learning to fly and while taking his cross-country flight instruction have been planned to do double duty. Each flight has been a business trip. His travel time has been cut 80%. He knows exactly how airplane ownership will benefit him. American aircraft designers and manufacturers are developing new airplanes. The aero car, both ground vehicle and airplane. The hummingbird channel wing. Ninety percent of all airplane owners pilot their own airplanes. They use executive types such as the Aero Commander, the four or five place 310 Cessna, manufactured in Wichita, Kansas. The six place Bonanza, also manufactured in Wichita. They use the popular four place Bonanza. The Piper Super Cub, a workhorse of the sky. The Call Air from Afton, Wyoming. Aronkas. Stinsons. Air Coops. Luscombs. Navions. There are all kinds of airplanes. Their biggest single user is the businessman. The economics of time and travel have made them a vital part of American life. 